So today on the bench we've got a uh, vacuum tube voltmeter. This is an ICO model 232 and this was given to me some time back, not too long ago, but some time back by my brother-in-law who actually built this himself. It was a kit and uh, he built it a long time ago as you might guess and uh, I think these are from like the early 60s and so we'll get into this and see, uh, I'm not going to see how he did, <laughs> but uh, we'll see if this thing's ready to fire up and see if we can use it. I, I wouldn't mind having another VTM that's uh, VTVM that's easy to move around. What we got here? Power cord and the probe. All right, the... Uh, I guess this is the ground. Yeah, this has definitely seen better days, huh? How brittle is that? Yeah. Snaps right away. So we'll be replacing this. And then here we got our probe. Ico Uni, Ico Uni probe, and it's got okay. So it's got a setting for the AC and ohms measurement, and it looks like another setting here for the DC measurement. And I guess this is supposed to allow you to pull and twist. There we go. We're gonna have to. We're going to have to open this up and see what's going on in there. It doesn't want to move very easily. So we'll have to take that apart, I guess. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Oh, that's kind of weird. I think that's the jack itself is moving around. Let's get this off of here. Yeah, that's a little loose. Okay, we'll have to work on that. Okay, let me uh, look through the deck here. It's got two screws in the back. We'll get this thing open and take a look at it together. Let's get this thing open. See how it see how it looks. Well, too old for Phillips. That's good see, good sign. I like this gray wrinkle finish. Wish you could buy it in cans. As I remember what you used to do is buy paint and you had something you would sprinkle into the paint or it was an additive and then it made it to where it would wrinkle up when it dried. I have no idea where to get that anymore. If you guys know, let me if you guys know, let me know. Okay. Let's get this uh, box out of the way. Box is in very good shape. It's not banged up or anything, it's in nice shape. Okay, get that out of the way. Okay, what we got here? Holy cow! <laughs> First of all, we got a Hercules battery. Now, I guess I'm I show my age about a lot of things, but I don't remember Hercules battery. Uh, premium for industry. That is a very strange looking, that does not look like alkaline. And that looks like it's burned. Right here. Well, I, I'll be honest. Let's see, how bad is it? We've got some deterioration of the plating here. Uh, the screws have corrosion. Got a little bit of corrosion here. I don't see it anywhere else. I gotta be honest, I've seen worse. I've seen worse. This I don't think this is alkaline. But I tell you what we need to do, we need to get rid of it. So I'm gonna do it right now. Holy Toledo Batman. Or as Dave would say, that's horrible, Muriel. Well, we're going to have to dispose of this. I'm not going to put that in the trash. I'll do something else with it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to bury it in the vegetable garden. 
not designed for retail trade. I wonder how old this is. Union Carbide. Okay, Union Carbide, you got some explaining to do. Okay, Hercules. That reminds me of a cartoon in the 1960s. With the strength of, was it? What's the strength of 10 ordinary men? Anyway. All right, so we got a couple of tubes. They're both in here. We got Ico. They're both Icos. Oh, it looks like this is all original. Look at that meter movement. It looks in nice shape from this side. Let's see if the needle moves. Yeah, needle moves. It still has the protective plastic on the uh, frame. Maybe if I get this thing working and I get so enthused, I'll take the front of it off and see if I can pull this plastic off to see how it looks. It's kind of yellowing, getting a champagne color. Doesn't look that great, so we can get that cleaned off. All right, let's look inside and see what we got besides that battery. So we got two tubes. Let me get my eyeballs on. I don't know if I should talk while I'm doing this. I'm just looking to see if I see anything obviously wrong. Like somebody had hooked it up to a high, a high voltage in the in the ohm meter uh, position and burned out a, a resistor. They all look okay. The solder jobs look neat. Okay, let's see where the power lines come in. See, let's start there. Okay, both power line connections are okay. I might redo that one eventually. It's just kind of stuck through and soldered. It looks like a cold joint. So I'll probably redo this one. It's holding on, but I don't like it. So I'll, I'll fix that one. Uh, I've got a capacitor right in there. So you can see my finger is. I've got the cap, the top bulging off the top of it. Let's see. You see that little black? Here, let me get a pointer. That won't work. I'm trying to point to right in there, if you can see that. The black is popping out of that gray capacitor. So I have to check that out. I say check that out. We're going to replace it. It is a 10 microfarad 150. That'll be no big deal. This wax capacitor, I'm not sure where that goes, but we'll... I got the schematic. I'll check on this in just a minute. That'll need to go, obviously. Uh, any other caps? Well, yeah, we've got some, but they're not really anything to worry about, I don't think. These kind here are probably okay. Uh, Alright, I'm going to spend some time looking at this. You don't have to look over my shoulder on the whole, whole time, but I'm going to take a look to see if I see anything obviously wrong. And then when I'm done, I'll come back and show, let you know what I found. But, you know, it looks extremely clean. Knobs all work. Okay, let's deal with this before I, before I lose you. Okay, we just need to get in there and tighten that up. It's going to be difficult to do with all these wires in here. I may have to end up unwi unwiring unsoldering some of these connections so I can get in there with a wrench or something and tighten that up. Okay, like this I've been able to get in there and tighten that nut up really well. So it's on there really snug now. So that's good. I just budged a few things out of the way. Just budging back now where they were. Okay, so the question is do you feel like charging this thing up with that capacitor possibly in there being a problem? Let me let me check to see what these two capacitors are in the schematic and see if I'm terribly concerned about them. I mean, I'm going to try this out on a on an isolation transformer anyway, so uh, we'll just see what this is what this is affecting. Okay, so I uh, got the schematic out on this and I found those two capacitors. Um, the big wax paper one is C1 and it is a 0.1 microfarad at a thousand volts. I'm fresh out of a thousand volt caps. Um, I've got I've got one that's 630. Um, 
I also looked to see, well, maybe what I could do is put a, a couple in series uh, to get that 1,000 volt uh, rating, uh, but I would need a couple of 0.2s to put in series and end up at 0.1 at double the voltage, and I only have 1.2 on hand. So uh, I'm going to just try to get by with this one for now, and we'll see how it does. It may be leaking a little bit, but uh, we'll just see what we get. Um, and I'll, I'll try to get another one of those tomorrow. The other one that had the bulging end on it is over here at C5. Uh, and C5 is across the output of the, uh, the secondary of the power transformer. So I'd like to get that one kind of working. And so it is a 10 microfarad at 150 electrolytic. And I happen to have one left 10 microfarad at 250. Actually, I got two of them good. So I may see if I can get those snuck in there before I power this thing up so I've got some control on the ripple before I start doing this other stuff. Uh, so I'll, I'll put that in. I'm going to leave this, this wax alone. We'll just see how it does. And uh, I'll come back when I get that capacitor way down in there replaced. It's way down there, the gray one. Down there. Okay, I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so here's the old capacitor out. You can see it was starting to get a little, un little unhappy. And so I didn't want to use this as my main ripple capacitor. So it's out. It is difficult to get in there. So I've left tags on there so I can, uh, you know, lead, show me where it went. And also I'm going to just J hook in the new one, which is uh, here. Right. Yep, so we'll get that in. Okay, so I got the uh, capacitor changed. It is that blue one way down in there. And that's about how I had to solder it. it was coming in at it like from there. Gives you an idea how far in that is. And uh, anyway, so it's connected. Soldered it in there. I think it did a pretty decent job. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna leave this one alone for right now. Uh, everything's closed tonight. I wasn't expecting to need a 1,000 microfarad, sorry, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor for 1,000 volts, so I didn't have it on hand. Okay, so what are we going to do now? I think I'm ready to plug this thing in and see what it does. So uh, let me get that set up. I'm going to hook up the isolation transformer. I'll bring it up slow and all that kind of thing. And uh, I'm not going to have you go through all the watching it come up, but once it gets up to uh, near its voltage, then I'll uh, bring you back and then we'll check a few voltage points that we might have available on the schematic to see how we're doing. Oh, by the way, one of the things I noticed when I was in there putting in that capacitor is I was verifying that I had the polarity right on this capacitor, okay, verifying it was installed correctly. So I saw that this positive lead goes to this right here, okay. Well, on the schematic parts list, it shows that as CR1 rectifier 35 milliamps uh, is that a selenium rectifier is what that's supposed to be well what's in there is a uh, silicon diode of some kind there's a diode right there I'm sorry there's a diode right there so if it doesn't have the same volt you know uh, what am I trying to say resistance you know, for, that's what I'm trying to say is I want to check the voltages past that to see if, if this is different. This was meant to be selenium rectifier. And if, uh, did they change the, the resistance or leave it alone? So it'll be interesting to check the voltage uh, in here. And let's see if we can find a good place to check a voltage out of here. So here we have, that says negative 100 volts and this says 50 volts. So I'll use that to see how we're doing. I, heck, I just check it on either side of that capacitor. Okay, uh, and I guess that would be related to ground, chassis ground. So, uh, all right, we'll get the, I'll get that get this thing brought up to uh, proper voltage, and I'll get it set up to measure those those uh, those voltages coming out of the secondary to see if we're getting the right performance out of here. Okay, so I'm currently set up. I've got 117 volts going on in. I've got this turn to uh, AC volts is a setting on the front. And uh, I'm hooked up to the 
positive side of that capacitor that we just installed and should have 50 volts and I'm getting 60 volts currently. So now I want to do a switch to the negative and this is this is to ground. I've got the ground connected right over here to a, a spot on the side of the, of the chassis where there's a, a ground tag over here. I don't know if you can see it. There you can see it there. I had this on an isolation transformer Variac and a uh, dim bulb tester for current limitation. I'm currently pulling 3.1, uh, sorry, 3.3 watts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now switch over to the negative side of that capacitor to see how close we get to negative 100. And of course, this is DC. And I'm at negative 107. All right, so I'm about 7 to 10 volts in magnitude more than we should have. So does that mean I need to do something about adding resistance to that diode? I don't know. I, it depends on whether or not we can get this thing to calibrate like it is, is what I think. And uh, we'll just go forward from there. I, I suspect it probably will calibrate just fine. Um, because these were probably sold as a kit to be this was supplied and whatever the correct resistances that were necessary I guess it'd be this one uh, were were set up like it needed to be so uh, I'm going to go forward with it like this but the good news is is that we've got we've got voltages out of out of this and I see a glow on at least one of the tubes so I know that the filament winding is okay all right so I've got glow on both tubes and the voltages seem to be okay. I don't know really if I have any other voltages to really check. So I think the next thing to do is to see if we've got a probe that we can use, and then start doing some checks. I'll uh, let me see. Uh, let me see about this uni probe and see what's up with it, and shut this power down until I. Okay, we're going to see what's up with the uh, uni probe. Uh, the way this thing works is you pull this out, and you turn this barrel, or you turn it on the barrel, to get different positions. So in this position, it's really loosened up since I've been work, working with it. This is AC ohms on this side. So this is AC or measuring ohms. And the other side is for measuring DC. Now, I believe in the DC setting, it puts in place a series resistor. Let me look at the, the uh, assembly instructions, which I have here. And there you can see there's a, a couple of blades, and it engages different positions depending on how you turn it. And here's that R1, and the R1 is a 1 meg resistor. And if you're making contact to this blade, then the, the, the series resistor is in the circuit. If you contact the other blade, then it bypasses it and comes through that way. And I believe that's in the DC position. Okay, so let's see if we can get this apart and see why it's feeling kind of kind of weird. It's kind of hard. It's actually loosening up. Maybe what we'll do is see what we got. Okay, I'll put it in this position and see what we're getting here. So, let's see. No continuity there, kids. Okay, let's try the other position. Really, I just switched to measuring resistance. No continuity there either. Well, so let's uh, let's go to ohms and let's see what we get here. I think we should get one meg here. Okay, I'm not getting anything. Okay, meter's working. If I go here, I'm getting nothing. All right, let's try this other position. So that's, I should have had one meg there, I think. So let's see, which way will it go? We'll go this way. Let's try again. Now we're in the AC ohms mode. Okay, the meter's working. 
So now go to the end here. Nothing. Okay. What I can do is I can um, use the probe from my RCA. I believe it's set up the same way with a one meg resistor in the DC position and it'll fit into this. So I can use I can use it instead. Or we can look at we can look at taking this apart and see what's wrong with it. Let's do that first. Alright, so it's got a small screw here. I believe this is what needs to come out first. It's the only thing I can see. I don't need to address. You can't really see it. There's tape wrapped around this. So I've got a little screwdriver that fits that pretty well. I think it's coming off okay. This might be under spring tension. But this thing is not conducting, so we need to find out what's wrong with it. Okay, got like a little set screw, came out, and let's see what we get here. So this end piece moves around and presides you a hole there, and how does this do? This want to come out this way? Okay, there's the spring. It's getting hung up. Come on. This is a spring. It's got a hold right here. So this is where you you do the pulling and the so you can turn the barrel. So it must be making contact through here on these blades. I believe these are supposed to be beryllium copper. Let's see if I can get something to push that out with. There we go. Getting some kind of melted goo here. I think maybe this may have gotten hot or something. This is. Can you see that? Okay, so after a bunch of wrestling, I got this out. It, it slid out the bottom, and uh, so here you can see where the coax comes in. There's a small screw right here that. Um, a small screw right here that is the relief against the the uh, pulling. The uh, core comes through and ties to the side of one of these as well as the uh, one meg resistor. So I'll, sh I'll pop up a picture of what schematically that looks like here. But what I want to do now is just see if I have continuity through these things here. Here you can see the blade here, which the one meg it goes through the one meg to get to this point, and this other side it, it shouldn't. So I'm just gonna make checks here, and then maybe the problem is on the other end. Uh, so we'll see. Okay, so I've got a hold of the core of the coax that comes down as it's about to go to both either this 
resistor to this uh, conduct, uh, leaf, I guess you call it, conductor leaf, or also comes this one without the one meg in the circuit. So let's just check what our resistance is to these different leaves. So the one that's supposed to be straight through without having the one meg in it is this one. It shows no continuity there. Let's try through the one that's the one meg. There's no continuity there. Okay, so the question is do I have a bad solder connection up here? Let me just see what we have right in this area here. Man, I'm getting nothing. What about if I go to the same spot? Let's see, am I not connected properly? Let's see what I'm connected to. Let me connect to the end of the coax. I was trying to connect to the, uh, the leg of the one meg resistor. Okay, so if I connect here, are you serious? Let me touch the other probe. Okay. It's, it's, it looks like it's got a lot of oxidation. Okay, let me see if I can scrape my way through this. Yeah, I had to scrape on it. You see that okay? Yeah, okay, so I'm getting that. So let's see if I come here, let me go to the, where the solder is. Okay, I got 1.1 meg, meg ohms, to here. It's not making a very good connection, is it? I'm going to clean these things up and see what we get. I'll bring you back after I clean these things up some. I may uh, also reflow this solder connection so we get good contact all through that area. We're going to do that as well. Okay, so what I've done is this slips up and off, allowing these blades to come off. I then took them and cleaned off the, sold the old solder entirely and cleaned up the connections. And what you've got here is you've got the lead that comes from the one meg resistor comes through and it forms a, a hook there if you see that. The signal lead from inside the coax comes up, it's stranded, comes up through the hook and is laying over it there if you see. Okay, so it goes through the hook. Then this leaf comes down, it has a tang that comes through and that tang comes through and sits in the in the crook itself like like that. So it's like you've got the the resistor wire comes in like this, forms a shepherd's hook like that. Then the leaf from this sticks into that and the coax comes from the other side and lays over like that. So when I solder that all together, uh, that should make a real good connection there. Okay. I need to also make sure that this lead of the resistor does not touch. Sorry. Make sure that this right here does not make contact with the lead coming out of the resistor. From here I can see it does not. And the other thing I did was on the contact surfaces up here, which is, I believe, is these surfaces here. I'm going to check that. But I went ahead and polished those up. I polished them with like, I don't know, 3,000 grade sandpaper. And then I uh, scrubbed it real good with uh, contact cleaner that you see right here. So. Hopefully that'll do it. I'll solder this up and bring you back when I'm sorry. Solder this up and bring you back when I'm done with it. Okay, I've got the uh, soldering completed here. That looks like a good connection. We'll see what we get in measurements. So I think I can get a hold of the end of the coax right there. Yep. And let's see if we go to the side that's straight through. Okay, we've got continuity. And let's go to the other side that has the one meg resistor in series. Okay. 
tolerance is kind of eh, but uh, hey, it's there. And I guess the calibration will take care of all this for us. But that looks like that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is move this from here to the other end of the cable. Let's see if we're getting a meg there. If we do, then we know the other one's good as well. Yep, so we'll go to the center here. Yep, there's our 1.1 meg. So we know the other one would be good too. So let's get this all back together again and we'll see how it works. Okay, on, so on the main shaft of the, uh, can, of the uh, rod as you turn it, there's this little cam shaped thing. You see it's got a key that rides on the main shaft so when you turn it, it turns 180 degrees. So it means it either contacts that leaf or it's turned around and contacts that leaf. So what I've done is, as you can see, is this is brass. It was all black and green so I went through and polished that up on the outside with a little bit of really fine, fine sandpaper. The face doesn't do anything. But now, you know, if it's pushing the spring here against for contact, then the shaft is pushing is pushing it against will be inside of this circular area. So I'm trying to clean that area out as best I can. So let's see what I'm doing there. So now I'm taking a piece of sandpaper and just cut it like a strop and I'm running it in and out of there like this. It's easier to do this when I'm not trying to film what I'm doing, but basically I'm just doing this to clean that semicircular area out as best I can. And then what I'll do is put some contact cleaner on a on a car. You know, you take a piece of Q-tip that's got a cardboard handle, and I just I cut the the cotton off the end, and then cut the handle at a bit of an angle, and I'll shove that cotton handle through there and rub that around, and that should clean it up some. Anyway, I'm going to be doing this for a while. I'll bring you back later. Alright. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, I see brass in there. Okay, put this thing back together again. Uh, but first, I need to also clean the inside of those blades. It's not making contact at the tips. It's along the, the inside of the body where this rubs in there. So I'm going to need to clean that too. Hey, you guys are going to have to keep up. I have to <laughs> stop every once in a while to remember to film some of this. So I've got the Pro Ball finished reassembling it. And it works pretty smooth. I took that little half moon shape piece of brass and really shined it up on all surfaces, clean, totally took apart all the elements of the probe and reassembled it. And now it uh, seems to work pretty well to get it and turn it from one position to the other. So we'll see how it does. Uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and figured the easiest way to test it would be is to go ahead and thread it into the front of the meter here and then check continuity. And I'll just go to where this lead comes out. And that goes to the center. And that's right here. Let's see. There. So let's see. If I'm on uh, AC, that should be direct continuity with no resistance. Okay. So let's see. That would go to... I'll just hook up to the black lead here. So first of all, let's see if we've got... The leads are okay. So that's them contacting each other. So that's what zero looks like. There we go, zero. Okay, now I'll hook it to here. And we got zero again. What do you know? So we got conductivity through in the AC position. AC ohms position. Okay, so let's turn it to the DC position. This should be a meg. There's our 1.1 meg. We fixed the probe, boys. Okay. Now let's see you know what time it is, right? Let's see if this thing works. Okay, so what am I going to do about this mess here? 
I'm looking at the side of this screw and it looks okay. It's uh, sorry. It looks okay. This is the other side of it. So I think what I'm going to do is for right now I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I think what I'm going to do eventually is I think what I'd like to do is install a buck converter like I have on my frequency counter, my frequency generator, sorry, and uh, use that to where I can have a, a circuit board here, a, a, a DC DC buck converter that'll drop it down, find some DC somewhere and drop it down to uh, 1.5 volts. It's one of these guys here. I bought up a bunch of these a while back. They're very inexpensive. And they can take an input of up to 3 to 40 volts DC and give me an output of 1.5 to 35 volts DC. And it can, it can provide up to 2 amps. I'm not going to need that. Um, so I may put that in eventually, but I'm not going to worry about that in this video. So what I'll do for this test is I'll probably just rig up something for verifying the DC works at this stage. The, uh, sorry, the ohms work at this stage. And then, uh, then we'll figure out what to do. Yeah, I decided to go ahead and get it off of here. Kind of like no time like the present, right? Let's get this off here. Okay. So this has an insulating washer. It looks like that goes through the uh, chassis. Okay, I'm gonna leave that little pad stuck on there. You can see the little white plastic piece there. So here's the other part of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna just see if I can clean. Sorry, I'm gonna see if I can just clean this up and make it good to go. I'll bring you back when I'm done with it. And there's the there's the bracket off. So here's how the ground is held on. I'll clean this screw while I'm at the other one. I may just take take a day and dump those in evaporust and get those cleaned off. But we'll see. And then the other one has the little nylon bushing pressed on it. That's fine. I'll just just wash it a little bit. And the rest of this is okay. Uh, the rest of the case, I mean, I know people would take rust killer and all this sort of stuff. Hey, you know, this isn't an expensive radio or anything. I may just leave that alone. With the battery gone, it's not going to progress any further. So I'll worry about that some other day. This is not a museum piece, right? Okay. Okay, I've got this all put back together. Uh, I don't have a D-cell <laughs> in the whole house. Uh, I may hook up a, as I said, I may hook up that DC-DC buck converter. I believe I'll hook it up probably at the plates of the 12AU7. That's 50 volts. I think that'll probably be fine. It'll probably work okay. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, I can come back and do that some other time. Or I can also, if I want to, when I'm setting this up, I can use my lab power supply and uh, put in one and a half volts here or I can use a maybe a double A battery we'll see but anyway um, I want to put this back together again in the case and kinda go through just to see if it functions uh, I may do calibration but I mainly just want to see if this thing is functioning and then if so then I'll go in and try the calibration and if it, if it won't calibrate then I'll start looking at components that may have gone off spec so anyway put the case back together back together Okay. Power cord here. Let's see now. I guess I'll burn it, put it up on the uh, isolation supply since I did a little bit of work on that uh, electrolytic filter capacitor. And uh, but just quickly, just make sure nothing went wrong, and then uh, we'll see what we do next. Let's just see if we get things moving around. It's pegged hard left. Yeah, we get in deflection. Doesn't go full, but it may not be necessary to do. So I have an AC here. Okay. Things are happening. It's good to see. Let's see, I've got a uh, I think I've got a black lead here I can use for the purposes of being my ground lead. 
Yeah, here we go. So, put that in down here in the ground connection. Well, we want to measure. And measure the own its own voltage going into it. Can I do that? Now, let's see. Let me put it on a. Let's see. Let's put it on the 500 volt scale and zero this. Now, if you're doing calibration, it says it needs to be left to warm up for at least a couple of hours. Uh, so I'm not really expecting a lot of accuracy here. I just like to see some kind of function. Okay, so let me get that at zero. That's pretty close. You know what I didn't do is do a mechanical zero. Let's go back. Let me uh, see what we're sitting at. Okay, we're not quite mechanically zero. Let me get that done. Okay, mechanically zero. Now we're at DC volts. It's doing its thing to wake up. They say it usually needs to have some time to do all this. We're so spoiled these days, be able to turn things on and have them ready to go. Okay, so I'm on the 500 volt scale. So let's see. So we go to 500 volt scale, we'll be here on the fives. And if I'm plugging in here, I'm seeing 115, so I ought to be just a little over that one, right? It's 1 1.5, so a little over 1.1, halfway between 1.1 and 1.2. I don't expect to see it that accurate. But let's just see if we can be in the ballpark, right? Okay, so I'm hooked up with a negative to this lead that comes out of the fuse. So I'm going to go to the other lead, which is the one that goes to the yellow. And we're going to be watching for deflection here. Okay, I just did a little tap. Okay, let's see what we get. As we do one back to zero. Slowly back to zero. Like I say I'm not looking for accuracy right here yet. Okay, that's reading uh, 50 volts. I want to go to the 150 scale. So that would be this scale down here. So I'm expecting it to be right around this area right in here. I'm going to tap it first. Yeah, that's reading low too. Okay. Like I say it's not too surprising. But I'm glad to see some reaction. So something's happening there. That's good. Uh, let me see. Is that, have I got something I can do DC with? Let's see. DC positive. I did have this on. A, I didn't have this set right. Okay. My, my, my goof. Okay, let's go back to 500 volt scale. Let's try it again. Went up and dropped again. Let's go to 150 scale. Jazzed up and dropped again. Okay, what I'm going to do is let this warm up, and then we'll see what we get later. Well, let me go to DC first. Go to DC. Disconnect this. Now I need to turn the probe to DC. Uh, let me see if I've got a battery here. I think I do. There's a little one and a half volt battery. Okay, let's see. DC volts positive. Uh, I'm expecting one and a half volts. Uh, I want to go to five volts to start. Full deflection, that's good. Okay. Let's see what we get here. On the five volt scale, that is reading one and a half volts, folks. 
don't have a battery in so ohms won't work right now AC I'm gonna let it warm up and see what it does uh, I do want AC to work so um, we're gonna wait to see how that works out I'm primarily going to be using this for uh, you know the calibration isn't actually that important to me I'm just doing it to make sure everything seems to be functionally okay I don't need to go in there and replace parts if it'll get close to calibrating then I'm probably satisfied to be honest um, what I'm primarily going to be using it for will be like peaking up uh, IF transformers and radios and I'm just using the, the sweep of the dial to help me with that and uh, so as long as it operates within a range uh, down on the you know the one and a half volt AC range I'm going to be happy um, so I'm going to let it warm up and we'll see how it does um, I've got it on AC right now and that's zeroed and if I go to 150 volt range see if it jumps up and drops down again It's not even doing it. That's because I'm on DC. Let's go to AC. Okay, I'm on AC here. Okay. Go here. And here. Hey, it didn't drop back down this time. Tubes are still trying to warm up. Okay, I'm on the 150 volt scale. It's reading almost 100 volts. Okay, I'm just over 100 there. Not quite to 110. But that's, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Let's check out the 500 volt scale. Won't be very accurate, but this is the 500 volt scale here, so I should be right down here. One, one, the one in a, let's see, where is it? The one, and one more hash mark over. Let's we'll see what we get. Did that change scales? No, it didn't. One, 500. Let me go here. Right about 100. All right, let this thing warm up a couple hours, and we'll try to calibrate it some more. But that's doing what I wanted to do. That's great, working good. Okay, so we did the mechanical zero a little while ago, and it's been two hours and it's been on. It makes a comment in the manual that for maximum accuracy, let it uh, warm up for 36 hours. Uh, you know, I, I'm just not going to be necess that won't be necessary. And the other thing is, is that when I get around to changing that other capacitor, I probably really will need to repeat all this. So uh, I'm not going to worry about going for 36 hours. So we've done the warm up stage. The next part is the AC voltmeter balance adjustment. Okay, so the way we do that is we set the function selector to AC volts, which is where we're set. The range selector to 1500 volts. So that's maximum voltage selection there All right and then what we do is we set the uniprobe into the AC position and it is in the AC position there AC ohms alright so then what we do is we short the uniprobe to the ground cable and use the zero adjust to set the pointer exactly at the left hand zero alright so plug this back in Take our negative lead and short it to the probe. All right, now what we want to do is adjust the zero to be precisely zero. Let me zoom you in. How's that look? I'm actually using the TV to help me see this. Let me connect this again. I think that looks pretty good, as far as I can tell. Okay, so then what we do is we keep this shorted, and then we change the range selector to one and a half volts, and reset it again to left-hand zero. Do this and go to one and a half volts. And now we adjust that to say zero as well. And that is the AC balance is the top screw. Okay, I'm in. All 
All right, the next thing is the AC voltmeter calibration. So what we do now is we leave it set at AC volts and put the range selector at 150. Union probe is still set to uh, to AC ohms here. And uh, let's see. Now what we want to do is connect the probe and the ground cable across 117 volt supply and adjust the AC calibration potentiometer. Okay, so what we're going to do is, let me just connect this from here. The negative lead, I'm going to connect up to my panel like I did a while ago. Let's see if I can do that. And now I need to connect the AC probe here to the voltage. And that this is what we're reading right here. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to adjust the AC calibration to match what we're reading right there. Let's see. Okay, so we want that to read 117. Okay. And that's the bottom, bottom screw here. So we're going to be on the 150 scale. I bumped it. Okay, so we're on the... Okay. I'm not getting stable here, what's the problem? Okay, we're on the 150 volt scale, so we want that to read 117. We can do it here, is it? 1.5. So we want that to read 1117, don't we? About 117 we're on the 1.5, and we're in RMS. It's at the maximum right there. Is that related to that capacitor? I don't know. There is some troubleshooting information on this I can try to look up. Uh, what you're seeing is the needle is thin and the shadow is thick to the right of it. And that's as high up as it's going to go. It's going to work for my purposes here, but uh, I probably will go back one day and, and address this. For what I'm doing right now, I'm okay with that. All right now, hang on. I'm going to get a DC source out here, and we'll calibrate the DC. Okay, now for doing the DC calibration, uh, what they suggest you do is take your DC system, put it on DC, right, and uh, then put it on the five volt scale, and then hook up two AA batteries. That would fully charge, give a little over three volts. Well, I have a I have a lab supply here that'll give a give me a, a full scale deflection. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set the the probe here to DC. So it's now in DC. I've got the output for this it's coming to this grabber. And the negative lead out of here is connected to the negative on the uh, lab supply. So I'm going to put in 5 volts. Let's see. Let's see, we're at DC ohms. We're 
we're at 5 volts we got this set in DC okay sure where the problem is. It's this or the... Uh... Just a minute. Let me try a better connection here on the probe. Okay. So let's first go and zero the probe. Okay, that's at zero. And now take that and hook it to the negative on the power supply. Okay. Now we want to go to five volts. Look, you can read that. That says 4.9. Not very noticeable. It's at 4.9. I get it to 5. Let's see. Okay, that's at 5.0 volts. It looks like you can barely see that. It's back down to 4.9. I mean, that's close enough, right? So 5 volts. So we need to get this trim to say 5. And that's the middle position. Okay, it still says five. Yep. So we're looking for five right there. And that's as high as it'll go as well. So we get the same problem. Is it that capacitor leaking? I don't know. Um, but we'll have to check on that. But otherwise, I mean, what I was really interested in is I want to get AC deflection, and this is giving it to me. So I'm going to call that good enough for now. And uh, if I get around to doing any more on this, I'll, uh, I'll see. By the way, hasn't it been annoying as I've been doing this work that I've been using this to try to track the input voltage coming in from the uh, Variac as I bring voltages up slow on the Variac? Uh, today I went to a parts store, and they had a number of items that were, I spent hours in there today. But anyway, one of the things they had in there I thought was really cool was this. There's just something about a pasteboard box with the original tape on it and a bug eaten tag on it and it says 1 meter voltmeter 0, 3, 15, 150 and uh, I bought this. It was reasonably priced, I thought. And I thought we'd open it up and see how it looks. A little unboxing here. I feel bad doing this in a way. But I didn't buy it just to have a sealed box on the shelf. Alright. Let's see what we got in here. Oh my gosh. Who wouldn't love having this? I would pull this out. Well, it didn't come out that way. It's tight fit. Please come out. Okay. You ready? Oh my gosh. Is that cool or what? It was a 150, so I just put a common and go into high scale, and I'll be able to read me bringing the variac up to different voltages. If I need to know something precise, I can connect it up, but otherwise, I don't have to have this thing all the time and beeping at me and wants to go to sleep and all that. I have no idea when this was made, but it looks like brand new. But there is some paperwork in here. Look how yellowed this is. God, I love this. <laughs> B. 
business reply card, guys. And it's got a warranty. If anybody's got an idea what year this was made, let me know. That's cool. It's not a serial number, is it? No. Not really. Very nice. Very nice. I'll be using this from now on. Cool, huh? Okay, we're doing calibration. I've uh, got two leads tied together here. I'm not using the probe, just to make it simpler. Just got the two leads tied together here. Uh, I'm pulling the positive off behind the back. So take it all the way to 1500. Scale should be zeroed. And take it down to 1.5 scale. And then adjust. Make that also read zero. Check to make sure it's still okay. It's up a little bit. I think that's going to be close enough. Yep, looks good. Okay, so now what we do is go to 150 volt scale. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the panel that I have over here set up. So the voltages I'm going to expect to see on that. Twenty volts, and that should be what we get on this. So the 150 volt scale will be here, so we should be at 1.2 right there. Okay, so we take this lead here, hook them up to the same place that that red voltmeter is connected. We're about reading about 105. We should be reading 120. This is fine for my purposes for what I want this to do. I'm just trying to see if there's something we can do to get this to read a little bit closer because I can turn this connection here and that's as far as it'll go up. I can go down, but that is hitting the stop going up. So I think the problem I want to try is replacing the 12AU7, which is the bridge tube located here. I'm going to replace that. And I just happen to have, have one. Okay. I'm just going to do a swap of these tubes and we'll see what we get. If this one doesn't work, I may have one more. So let's just see what we get. Let me, move the, let me just budget around the socket first. Maybe I got a bad connection. No. Tap it. No. Kind of tried to do something there, didn't it? Okay, I'm going to pull it. We put in another one. This will need to warm up a little bit. And I'll have to rebalance everything. So I'll bring you back when this thing has kind of had a chance to warm up. Okay, this uh, 12AU7 from my stash is uh, I've been warming up for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. So let's, uh, let's go back and re-zero everything. So 1500. Looks like it's about 
close. Let's go to 1.5. That still looks pretty good. It's worth changing. And I can tweak it a little bit. Not really. Okay, go back and check. Full scale is still on zero. Okay, so let's go to 150 volt scale. I've got this reading, what's coming out of my panel, which agrees, of course, with this. Here's the old tube that I had in there a minute ago. Okay, so let's take the leads which we've had tied together and hook them up to what this is reading. connect. There we go. There's one. There's the other. Well now there's a different outcome. Okay, now we're talking. Now take this bottom one and tune it to, let's just say, 120, 121. All right. So that is 120 right there. And I've got 121 there. If I want to try to split hairs and go halfway to the next mark. And by the way, I'm looking like right there, right? This is 150 volt scale. This bottom one is only for when you're on the 1.5 volt AC scale. Okay. So let's see. You know, that's that's close enough. Remember you're looking at two things there. You're looking at the actual needle, which is incredibly thin, which is to the left. And then what you're seeing, that darker line on the right is the shadow. So I'm using the little thin line on the left, if you can barely see that. I'll zoom you in. So, like I say, I'm looking at the... You see two lines here. I'm actually looking at the one that's on the left. That's the actual needle. The one on the right is the shadow from the light, which is over to our left. So uh, if I want that to be 121, I think I'm right on it. See, this is 121 right here. And each one of those hash marks would be 20, right? So that's 121. One. Okay, now if I take that off, do I go to zero? I read that the drop being slow is correct. It's what you would expect to see. Okay, we got ourselves an excellent AC calibration. All right, so let's do a DC calibration. Uh, let me get that set up. I need to bring a, a lab supply up here, and uh, we'll get that hooked up. So bear with me. Okay, I'm getting ready to go to the DC calibration. I put the unit probe back on because I want to have the 1 meg uh, resistor in line when I do that. Uh, let me just verify that the AC works correctly. Swing that around to AC position. I zero it. Zero. And put it on the panel. Make sure it works. Let me see. I'll put it like there and here. Okay, and I'm getting 120, 121 volts, somewhere around there. That's close enough. There we go. I've got a, I think this has a contact problem. I mean, you need to go in there and clean those contacts a little bit more. But I'm never going to use this really. I'd probably be using something else. There you go. 121 volts. Okay. So we're going to go to DC position on this. DC. Zero the probe out. Let's see. I'm going to go to 5 volt scale. DC volts. Zero it. 
Okay, now we'll turn the lab supply on and let's put on, let's say, 5 volts. Okay. Get where you can see this. It doesn't have a backlight in it. Okay, we'll turn this to about 5 volts. Close enough, right? And what we'll do is we'll uh, verify how we're doing here with the uh, the ultra, other multimedia meter here. DC. And let's put it in the white dot is where I'm pointing. <laughs> okay, 4.7. That's fine. We can try to fine tune that a little bit. I mean, I'm never going to be needing this kind of accuracy on this meter. Let's call it 5 volts. Okay. So now we'll disconnect the negative and hook it up to the negative from the power supply. Which is here. And the positive from the power supply goes onto the probe. And we need to adjust DC to be 5 volts, full scale. Right there. Very close. We're looking right here. Very good. What does that leave? Well, I went to the store and got a D cell. No, I'm not going to leave it in, but we'll hook it up and see if we get the ohms to even work. Okay, so I'll zero this. Uh, let me put the the cell in. Let me back you up a little bit. That's as far as you're going to go. Okay. Positive down into the cup. Okay. We now have a D cell installed. All right, so let's see. We've got this grounded together. We want this to go to AC ohms. Okay, AC ohms. Take this to ohms. And let's see if we're getting anything. Let's see, we've got this on ohms. Um, so now we ought to be able to see. Let's see, wait a minute. Take that off. Now we got it disconnected, so now we should be seeing infinity. We're looking at the, the topmost scale, bringing that into infinity. Looks like, the, looks like the ohms are working. It shouldn't be moving around me just touching that probe, though. It's going back to infinity. So now if I touch the that it should go back to zero. Yeah, this probe has got a. Let's see, it's working now. So I've got what I need out of this. I've got it to where it's going to be relatively accurate for AC, and I'll be able to use it for analyzing the sweep of of uh, IF transformers. But the main thing this turned out to be was we just had a weak 12A7 tube, 12AU7. Too bad it was original tube, but uh, it is what it is. Anyway, it's going to work. So I'm taking this probe back apart because it annoys me. All right, so here you can see the, the contact, this eccentric contact. I kind of didn't show you last time. Uh, come on, focus. Yeah. So as you turn this thing, it moves from contacting all the way to the left, as you see there, to all the way to the right, as you see there. 
and that rides inside of here. So it's in there kind of like this. And as this thing is operating, it turns and it contacts, you know, either this leaf or that leaf. Focus. That leaf or this leaf as it turns around and makes contact. So what the deal is, is that it's not making good solid contact in here. There's like a service bulletin or, or something that, I don't know what you call it, where they're making comments that people are having trouble with these, you know, the people who, I guess, work for the company. You know, how to, how to address it. So you can see where I went in there and I did some polishing in here. Obviously not enough. But the other thing they said is you take these things and bend them in to where they have like a belly, they call it where it kind of tries to pinch in on where that little switch is. So I'll, I'll try to do some of that and see if it works any better. If not, I've got another probe that I'll use instead of this one. Uh, I'm not sure how much I like that design, but anyway, I'll get on that, bring you back when I'm done, see if it works. Okay, when well, that's for a belly, they got a belly. So I gave this thing a pinch in to help it have contact in the area where this little rotating cam will fit. It's going to be in here about like so. I made some marks in Sharpie about where it's going to be resting in here and I bent it a little bit north of there and it's going to be sitting about like that. All right. So if you look right here, it's right below that fiber washer. You can see the shininess of it right there. So it's turning. It's going to be about like this. Turning and making contact there. I mean, contact there, and of course, while well, this is in the barrel, that's holding that really tight. So I think we got some good force here, and I also went in there and really uh, cleaned up in those areas where it would be touching. So I think that'll help this out a lot. We'll put it together and see how it works. Okay, guys, it's back in the case. I've got myself another handy piece of test gear. I've had this other, this other one up here, this uh, the senior volt almost up here, which I really like because it has a really big scale on it. It's much bigger than this one. Uh, but you know, for what I'm doing here with videos and stuff, it's pretty inconvenient to keep panning up here and trying to see stuff. So I was thinking it'd be nice when I'm working on alignment of radio, I have this little small portable thing right here next to it. And I think we can see the swing on here a lot easier. Um, the, the fix on the probe is fine. I can go over here and see we're at 121. I come over here and hit the panel. And we're getting what we're supposed to see. And we got... It's, it's, it's nice and solid. That made good positive connection. That solved the problem. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave these uh, covers out that go into here uh, for a little while longer. I'm going to leave it on, let it get up to, uh, you know, maybe not 36 hours, but I'll leave it on because uh, it's so much easier to take those out when I have it out of a case. And uh, when, I'm, when I'm finally finished messing with this, I'll put those caps in, but uh, we'll see. And no, the D cell is not in. I'm not leaving that in there and have it, you know, have it do this, All right? There's no point. I don't need that for for doing uh, resistance measurements. There's no point in putting this time bomb in there. Okay. Okay. So I've got the volume kind of low. I've got the modulation up turned up pretty loud here. Let me turn the scale back down. Okay. Now let's do our alignment. Let's see if this swings back and forth for us. That's what we wanted to see. That's what I did all this work for. So to make this easier to swing that back and forth. Looking good. Let me turn down the volume a little bit. See you next time.